Okay, I'm going to show you the book way to work out what shims you need for the crank. So, first off, what we're going to do is we're going to measure across the crank web. Then we're going to do the depth to each bearing from a known position on this piece of um, bar and that will give us a number of measurements so what we'll do is I'll talk I'll do those measurements and then talk you through what I found okay Okay, let's start putting these numbers together then. So we've got the bar measurement, which is 20.05 millimeters. And that, that's just a data measurement that I've taken from my bar. It doesn't reference anything in the manual. So we've got the crank at 87.91 millimeters. Ducati referenced this measurement as LA. The right hand case was 65.81 but we've got to take the 20.05 off so that would be 45.76 millimeters. Now this is referenced as, sorry let's put an equal in there, this is referenced as LA1. Then we had the left hand case measurement was 66.26 but if we take the 20.5 off that's 46. 0.21 millimeters and that is referenced as LA2 and then crank preload Ducati manual specifies 0.3 millimeters I know from experience and from other tuners and engine builders uh, on the web and that I race with that if you use that you can sometimes preload the uh, bearings too much and get premature failure. So I tend to use anywhere between 0.1 and 0.15 millimeters. So we'll use 0.15, okay? So what we need to do is work out the shim value. So shim value in the manual is called SA, all right? And that is LA1 plus LA2 plus the shim crank preload which is 0 0.15 minus LA so we are putting in 45.76 plus 46.21 plus 0 0.15 minus 87.91 so effectively we've got five, six, seven, eight, 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 two one two ninety two point one two minus eighty seven point nine one millimeters and that gives us a total shim value of one two four point two one millimeters so this is our shim value SA right there's an interesting piece here to bear in mind that if you think where we've taken the center line of the engine cases we've got one bearing measurement on the right hand side and another bearing measurement on the left hand side and they're bigger measurements okay so what you want to do is make sure that you don't split this directly in half because you'll force the crank too far over this way so you want a smaller shim here and a bigger shim here okay so we need to work out how we position this crank so that it doesn't push all the way into the left hand side because we overload it too much on the right hand side so we need to split this measurement down 
okay and the manual method of doing this so we need to get SA1 which is a combination of SA sorry we need to get SA which is a combination of SA1 plus SA2 where SA1 is the shim thickness for LA1 and SA2 is the shim thickness for LA2 SA1 is the one that we work out first and that is LA1 okay plus half the preload so 0 0.075 millimeters minus the crank measurement divided by 2 all right so if we punch in those numbers then that is 45.76 plus 0 0.075 minus 43.955 which is half the crank that therefore gives us 45.835 minus 43.955 so that will give us 5 goes away Use eight, eight. So we get 1.88 millimeters. If you use the maths backwards, all we need to get for SA2 is 4.21 minus the 1.88 equals. To Two point three three, okay, and then just to double check that back, you just go SA equals one point eight eight plus two point three three. One, two, four point two one millimeters. Yay! Right, so oh, let's just SA one, SA two. We got 2.3 millimeters, 1.8. So, what you can see there is that we will have a bigger shim on the left hand case, a smaller shim on the right hand case, which will keep our crank centralized. So, what I'm going to do as we start putting this engine get together, I'm going to now check what we've got. So, I am going to use uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to use two times two millimeter shims. see that we've got an end flow of 0.1 so we had to need to add about 0.2 so if you think with the correct shim size was 4.21 I put two shims in it two mil each so I should have had a gap of 0.21 but bear in mind that I'm after at least 0.10 preload in the crank so getting 0.13 movement uh, deflection I should say in the crank end when we measure it with the dial gauge shows that we're ballpark about right so what I'm going to do is put in the shim sizes that we originally specified in the measurements or, or as close as so where it is going to be 1.88 I'm going to put in a 1.9 shim and where it's 2.33 I'm going to put in a 2.35 and that will preload the crank by an extra 0 0.05 of a millimeter so that's how you go about doing the crank shim sizing by the book 
you'll see you still need to do the deflection method. So if you're taking an engine apart and putting it back together and using all the same components, I would go straight to the um, deflection method and it is recognized in the manu manual as well. Just make sure you have some smaller shims so that you can get some movement to check that the gap in the preload is correct. And if you're working from scratch, then obviously you want to use that measurement process that I've gone through there. Hope that helps. Hope that clarifies for the people that asked, how do you go about getting the shim sizes if you don't know them in the first place? Um, if you enjoyed the video, chuck us a like. If you've got any questions or comments about the process that I've shown you here in this video, then please ask a question in the comment section below. And if you're not a subscriber, I'd welcome you to the channel. We've got plenty more content coming. Okay, thanks for watching. Cheers then. Bye.